talking about BLM. <laughs> so this is something I wanted to cover, which is mm. the trial of Derek Chauvin or the George Floyd trial as it's being known, whether you like it or not. Because, of course, George Floyd is not on trial because he's, he's dead. I mean, he probably has been on trial a few times, right? Probably. But the, uh, the trial is about <laughs> Derek Chauvin, but right. no, one, no one remembers his damn name, so it's getting called the yeah. George Floyd trial. So the charges are as follows. Uh, Derek Chauvin, the officer who put his knee on the neck of George Floyd, is being charged with, was originally being charged with third-degree murder and second-degree manslaughter. They then added unintentional second-degree murder and dropped the third-degree murder. Third-degree murder would have been hard to get him on, apparently. So third-degree murder would have been causing an unintentional death in an obviously dangerous act. So they would have argued that he was being obviously dangerous, but they, they didn't want to argue that because that wouldn't have wouldn't have flown no so they went for second degree uh murder instead causing an unintentional death while committing or attempting to commit a felony the felony here being third degree assault but that's obviously not what chauvin was doing well third degree assault uh, i'm just getting these paraphrasings from reading the the uh legislation so it'd be recklessly non-intentionally infliction of fear or seriously uh, serious bodily injury mm -hmm. upon george floyd but he's under arrest so I mean, how do you arrest someone without committing assault? So I, I don't know how that works. Um, but if, if you want a more detailed lawyer version, I imagine go to Viva La Fry. I'm just laying out the, mm -hmm. the basics here. Yep. And then second degree manslaughter would be uh, consciously creating an uneasy, unnecessary risk, which causes death. So him would be consciously putting his knee on there, even though it was unnecessary, yep. and then caused him. That would be the argument. And I went and watched the full body cam video before we started this, just to remind myself of all of the details. And... Um, I don't think they're going to get him. I don't think they're going to get him at all. I think he's he's going to get away with all of these charges from my, my brief well, I mean, the, I, I watched this when it first came out, and one of the things... I mean, you just... When he sat in the car saying he can't breathe... Yeah, so... And he asked him to put him on the floor. Just a small recap of what happens. You can watch the full thing yourself. I recommend you do it. Um, they pull him over. They pull him out. He's acting delirious. He's saying, I can't breathe, even when he stood up. Yeah, it's weird. And then they try and get him into a cop car because they're like, this suspect could run. He's, he's acting weird. And then he refuses to get in the car. He's saying, I, I'm claustrophobic, so I don't want to do this. They try and force him in. It doesn't really work. So then he's like, put me on the ground. So they put him on the ground. And they're like, right, call the ambulance. They call the ambulance because it's better to get him out of there yeah. than to keep him there if he's on drugs and crazy. And then they put him in what's called the recovery position, which includes the knee on the neck, apparently. So this is to keep him from... Um, hurting himself or hurting officers, running into traffic, this sort of thing. Right. And then you put him in the ambulance. And this is the argument of the defense attorney. So if we go to the next link, this, uh, sorry, this is the, the data here. Sorry, the notes. Uh, wait, no, we should have a link before that, John. Yeah, there we go. This is the, the defense attorney mm -hmm. arguing that his uh, position is that, well, George Floyd ge killed George Floyd, uh, not my client, which is the officer with the knee on the neck. Yeah. And if you just scroll down a little bit, just so we can see the first image there, because this is central to his argument. This is a a slide, down first a image, more, which is a slide showing what to do when you've got someone who is acting delirious. You put them in this hold here. And if you can see from the, the image, mm -hmm. there is the officer at the front with his knee on the other officer's neck to demonstrate this keeps him in a position, which is known as the recovery position, mm -hmm. until they can get medical assistance. Yeah. And he makes a, a few claims in here. So the fact that he was saying, I can't breathe, even when he stood up. So when he's saying, I can't breathe on the floor, well, what did you expect him to do? Take this incredibly seriously or to take it as this guy's still moaning? Um, when something serious happens, then I will change my position. And then there's also the problems of just the video evidence from that, uh, you know, the little handheld mm -hmm. cameras they have yeah. on. So if we can go to the first image. You can see here there is something in his mouth. And this is looks being alleged. Looks like a pill, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks like a pill. And the, the defense is alleging that this is fentanyl. This is the fentanyl dose they found in his system afterwards. Hmm. And he is uh, in, instead dying from the fentanyl. So the next image is just a, a screenshot I got from the body cam video. It's a little lower quality, but it's it's definitely not a fake. It is yeah. a real thing. He had something in his mouth. I mean, maybe it's gum, if you want to make that kind of Could argument. Be. But, Could be gum. Hmm. But then you have the fact that when they searched him after arresting him, next image... Uh, you see in the bottom left there, they they pulled out a crack pipe. Hmm. I was like, right, okay, so I'm inclined to believe he might have been taking drugs. And if you don't take hmm. my word for it, you can take the people investigating his body's oh, word the toxicology for it. report. Yeah, so they did they did lab tests, which apparently was better than the autopsy, mm -hmm. the notes here. 
um, him arguing that that's the reason they did this. And they mm -hmm. found fentanyl at 11 nanograms per milliliter. Uh, just to read from his notes, this is higher than a chronic pain patient. If he were found dead in a home alone with no other apparent cause, this would be acceptable to be called an overdose. That's the medical professional here saying that if he had been found with no other, you know, obvious symptoms, mm -hmm. this would be an overdose. That's how he died. Open shot. I mean, 11, 11 nanograms per milliliter. I, I don't know anything about the measurements. Yeah. But so a death could be certified at three nanograms per milliliter. Yes. So he's got almost four times as much fentanyl in his system as this medical professional is saying could cause death. Yes. Although I should note, he puts underneath, I'm not saying this killed him because he has to cover himself and saying, of course he does. This is, this is something that could kill him, but I'm not the arbiter of, of truth here. Yes. It's just he happens to have a lot of fentanyl in his system. Yeah, there's also some other notes that I have to read because I, if I had nothing else, they're just strange. So he says there's meth, 19 nanograms per milliliter. This is exceedingly low, but meth is bad for your heart. Well, good to know. It certainly is. Uh, from the videos I've seen, it appears that the knee is on the side of his neck, not where the, and then unintelligible, are. So he's saying there's something on his neck. Presumably not where blood flow Presumably is. Presumably bruises or something. Bruises or yeah. something. I couldn't read it because it's in doctor's handwriting. I've yeah. even had Josh look at it. We couldn't read it. But <laughs> he's saying that the where the knee was doesn't seem to have been the place where yeah. it would kill him. Uh, they also mention the fact in the original argument from mm -hmm. the defense. Well, we also have the his major heart arteries were functioning at 75% blocked. So it's like, okay, so he's got a weak heart. He yeah. also had COVID, as we found out. He was a ex-COVID uh, oh, really? patient, okay. so we say. So that might have had an effect on his ability to breathe. He had the small amount of meth in there, which is bad for your heart, ladies and gentlemen. And he had significant amounts of fentanyl in his system, which, again, very bad for you. Hmm. So the argument is, of course, well, we had him down on the floor, and any normal person might have been able to survive this. That's why it's recommended by the police to do this. But this might be an extreme case in which he died. And is my client meant to have known this? This guy completely off his face on drugs with a bad heart. Yeah. Like, is my client meant to just magically know that this guy's got these health conditions no. and these so on and so forth? If if you don't want him doing this, don't teach him to do this. And seems like a fair argument to me. So if we can go back to the, the defense. So he argues that the police were following their training as given. Mm -hmm. And that the suspect was at risk of dying due to the drug overdose. So... Therefore, we put him in the recovery position as as you advise. In which case, this definitely isn't murder because there's no intent to kill. Because, I mean, also him calling the ambulance for George Floyd twice. Yeah. I mean, if he wanted to kill the guy, I don't think I'd call an ambulance. So, not... I mean, De Derek Chauvin seems to have followed procedure. Yeah, that's the defense's argument here. And I, I have sympathy with the argument. It seems to be true yeah. by the evidence he's provided. Um, they also go on to talk about his views on why people haven't intervened. And this defense attorney is uh, uh, not woke, let's put it that way. So he says, the case is being used by neo-Marxists and opportunistic criminals across the country as a pretext to riot, loot, and burn. Based and true. Prove him wrong. How's that not true? <laughs> I love that he uses neo-Marxists there as well. Yeah, no, Great. they should. Everyone should be calling them neo-Marxists mm. because they are. And then he goes on to talk about, um, well, the people in charge, the, the mayor, city council, the people in charge of the police, you will know that this is the procedure. You've all been told this. Um, or you were the ones writing this to tell them to do it. Hmm. So when they've gone and done it, why did you throw them under the bus? Why did you not make the point of, well, this is the procedure, it's unfortunate. Public pressure but, and riots, people being murdered in George Floyd's name? Seemingly in their interest. So he says in here, would the agitators have been so successful in causing nationwide mayhem if Mayor Frey, a Democrat, mm -hmm. or even a single member of the Minneapolis City Council had publicly acknowledged the plain, undeniable truth that far from murdering George Floyd, these police officers were acting pursuant to their official MPD training to reduce the risk of sudden death? Certainly wouldn't have grabbed headlines like it did. It's like, well... That's the other point here. Like, they're acting not just in a way that's, oh, procedural. The The fact that they called the ambulance and then were trying to hold him, the the point of procedure in there is to save the suspect. Mm. They think the suspect is in serious danger. Yeah. He's, you know, over his head on some kind of drugs or something like this. We need to Quite take care of him. Quite obviously so if you watch the footage. Yeah, you were not trying to hurt the guy. You're trying to take care of the guy. 
But that doesn't line up with the white nationalist narrative, does it? No, it certainly doesn't. But the the reason I've given you all this is not because I'm some legal expert who can predict the case. I'm not making no, these no, claims. No, no, no. These are all facts. Is because I want to give uh, what I consider at least an honest interpretation of what is going on. I don't want to give you just like the BLM side, for example, hmm. who will argue nothing. So the the prosecutors are arguing no. Oh, they'll argue racism. Yeah, the prosecutors are arguing knee on the neck helped cause the death. Therefore, we think its primary cause of death was that. Therefore, you're guilty. And the defense is arguing. No, guy's high on drugs. Um, we were also told to act like this. Therefore, my client didn't do nothing. Yeah. So that's that's the case. But BLM are not being told this. So this is just some tweets from uh, Jack Posobiec, who is giving you updates on the court case. Mm -hmm. So the, the first one here is that prosecutors will not include the medical examinations performed by the doctors hired by George Floyd's family in the murder case. That's weird. Why wouldn't they include that? So the... The prosecutors, arguing that this police officer did wrong, hmm. they have a medical examination by a private doctor, and they're not including it. I wonder if it's because the private doctor was like, wow, 11 nanograms per, per whatever it Milliliter is. Milliliter of fentanyl. Yeah. That's, uh, That's enough to fell a horse. What's going on here? <laughs> you know, like. So the prosecutors are deciding that, no, they're not going to show that side of the argument. So it'll be up to the defense. And I guess we hope the defense won't show that side either. I don't know. What. Uh, yeah. I don't know what else they're going to do. Yeah. Let's go to the, the next one. So, can we go to the, the BLM one, where the jury's being asked about the BLM riots? No, back. So, we're about there, to... there, are, there are tweets before this, so the, uh, I'll just say it instead. Yeah. So, the, the jury were asked, so the jury they brought in were asked about the BLM riots. So, mm -hmm. was any of your property damaged in the summer riots? And if you answer yes, oh, you're, not on the you're not on the jury anymore. Oh, really? Well, that means a lot of people are off the jury then. Yeah, because I mean, what is it, half a million Apulis yeah. is, is on fire. So anyone involved in that, too bad. And then they're also asking them about their views on BLM and B and Blue Lives Matter. They're like, well, hmm. well if, you, if you back the blue, we can't have you on the, on the jury. And I, I don't think this is wrong either. Like, if, you're, if you want an impartial jury, you can't have people who have a vested interest in the case. Sure. But, so legally, but conversely, I think it's right. conversely, if you have literally society-wide issues what do you do that have impacted absolutely everyone you're not going to be able to get jurors who don't have an opinion on black lives matter exactly and i mean how far do you take this even because yeah. i know there will be blm people arguing that any white person on that jury is, is biased a racist, yeah. and of course you could get the opposite argument of any black person will be biased yeah. in the same way that people made these arguments about oj simpson's case mm -hmm. well in which case are we just going to stack it full of asians well, I guess they're proto-white supremacists, so therefore oh, yeah, they they're they're also have to go. They've been folded into the white supremacy. So. Jews, they're white supremacists, so there's no ending uh, that line of logic, in my view. Yeah. So the, the BLM type's not happy about this, and the state is acting accordingly. So let's go to the barriers being put up. So in response, the state oh, here we go, yeah. is putting up literal walls, because walls don't work, folks, to protect the courthouse and the, uh, the city. From Presumably from white supremacist uprising. Yeah, when he yeah. gets sent down, the, the KKK are going to come and riot, mm. I, uh, I guess. Mm. Yeah, Likely. And they also called in the National Guard. <laughs> Interesting how uh, how that's nice and easy to be done. I mean, remember when Trump asked for the National Guard to be present? I do. It didn't, didn't happen when burning, looting, and murdering was going on, but it does happen now. Hmm. Mm. All of a sudden, mm. they're, they're pretty, pretty sure that this is going to happen. Mm. It's almost as if they don't think they can blame this on the president. Yeah. And therefore... They need to actually protect their own yeah, citizens. Yeah, now that there's no political capital to be made out of it, and it looks like, well, um, Floyd did this to himself, Black Lives Matter aren't going to be happy about this, aren't they? Yeah, and uh, of course the leftist uh, view on this is that, how dare they do this? Why, <laughs> why are they calling a thousand National Guard in Minneapolis oh, courthouse? Oh, good question, Jill Weinbanks. There's only a crowd of largely peaceful people outside <laughs> the trial. It's like, <laughs> okay. Oh. Okay, then. I, I guess what you can say is this is a way of ensuring they will remain largely peaceful, isn't mm. it? And, uh, of course, the video evidence suggests that they might not remain peaceful. Oh, wow. So really? the, the next link is them shouting, F the, police, F, F the police, if justice don't get it, shut it down. Really? It's like, mm -hmm. mm. People looking for justice, I'm mm. sure. Mm. They, they care deeply mm. about what the law says and not just mm. what their own narratives say. And this isn't just a small group of people arguing outside. Apparently, something much worse has taken place in, in this city. So the George Floyd zone has been set up. Ah, yes. So this is another autonomous zone. 
in which leftists are trying to protect their own interests. As these violent protests Fox News is going to inv invade our podcast with. Yeah. God. Sorry, gone. Sorry, terrible websites and their pop-ups. Yeah. So this this is also interesting because Fox News is saying there's an autonomous zone being set up, the George Floyd zone, and uh, a police spokesman, John Elder, told Fox News there is no autonomous zone, but that crowds do interrupt police and medical responders. So if we just deny it exists, then it doesn't exist. I can sort of get what he might be saying, if to be ultra charitable, which is that we don't recognize it. Yeah, but you should have said that. In which case you'd shut it down. But yeah. that's not what the city is doing. So if we go to the next one, the city is instead negotiating with the autonomous zone. Why? 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 Like, you they're say, insurgents. Hey, yeah, shut the, down. The, yeah, exactly. You insurgents have got no, no right to do any of this. You're going to jail for these crimes you have committed. God, could you imagine the Iraqi government like negotiating with Al-Qaeda for zones of Baghdad back, please? No. Weird. So I also wanted to mention here that he, the defense is blaming uh, the mayor for lying to the public, and then it's the mayor here also who is negotiating with the autonomous zone hmm. instead of shutting it down and condemning it. And everyone knew where this was going, and it has happened. There has been a shooting. So the next link is there's been a shooting nearby. Why are we not using our own reporting on this? I didn't know we had one, but we there did. we go. So, according to the Times of Sunday night, no white people were allowed inside the autonomous zone. <laughs> oh, and this isn't racist. Local activists were keeping white people out, and there has been a fatal shooting of a black man nearby. The suspect allegedly shot the man after having an argument, um, and then fled the scene. Oh, wow. I mean, surprise, surprise. Um, Not at all like the previous autonomous zones. So, we're, we're waiting for this trial. It's going to keep going ahead, because they're just at the jury stage. Mm -hmm. They will go into the opening statements and eventually the verdict, which I don't think BLM are going to be happy with. No. I, I mean, even if he gets manslaughter or something, they're not going to be happy with that. No. They'll declare that a miscarriage of justice and burn the place down, because, I mean, he's a white supremacist, don't we know? Or do we? Well, what, that's what I've been told. What was the evidence for him being a white supremacist, folks? Well, he's white. He was a white man, and the suspect was black. Yep. That was it. And then, literally, that is the entire stock of evidence to suggest that George Sh uh, Derek Chauvin was a white supremacist. And I'm not saying that secretly he might hate the black people or something. I'm sure there's, like, well, a possibility that that's true. But is he a white supremacist, white nationalist, as we keep getting told? Well, let's just look at his family. So if we go to the next link, this is an article from before any of this happened, in which they're celebrating his then-wife here, who divorced him when the charges came in to distance herself from it. But there seems to be no you know, arguments about him treating her wrong. She's in which a refugee from Laos. She's a La Laotian refugee, and uh, here's what she looks like. Right, so she's not white. And there's their son there, who he's again... also not white. Not white. Um, I, I think he's a pretty bad white supremacist, if this is what he's going for. I mean, mm. to me, this just looks like you can argue it's police brutality, it's, you know overreach or something like this but the racial angle the reason blm is involved in this whole thing is a nothing burger this is all a lie we have all been fed this utter lie for months mm. and it's justified the deaths of what at least 20 people yeah, over the least. summer at least and another one apparently and there'll be more there will be more if you enjoyed this segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can watch the full broadcast live every weekday at 1pm UK time on lotuseaters.com.